So, naglalaro ako ngayon dito sa Vivo V29 ng mga games and all I can say is ang powerful din pala niya. A lot of you guys are requesting na i-review ko yung gaming performance nitong phone na to, Vivo V29. Ah, ganda ng graphics. Look at that. OMG. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I mean, the graphics you get with this phone is impressive. Oh my god, ano ba yung poster nito? Snapdragon 778 5G poster. Ito po yung kanyang Antutu benchmark. Pero huwag niyo maliin yung number na yan. This phone is actually one of the most optimized phones for this processor. Kasi nga guys, I have played Mobile Legends, Genjin Impact, Honkai, Star Trail, and even Farlight. Uy, you know, matagal niyo na nire-request yan. Farlight 84. Kasi ito na ba yung uso ngayon, sabi nila. Sabi nila, pero nakita sa... Play Store, hindi naman siya gano'ng kataas sa ranking. Ang dami na nag-hype dyan na Farlight 84 na daw, yung mga influencers na Farlight 84. It's still Mobile Legends, guys. Mobile Legends pa rin. Could be, hindi kaya ng mga ibang smartphones yung Farlight 84. Pero napansin ko naman na itong phone na to, ay grabe, nakita ko sa Farlight 84. Ang ganda, ang smooth. Goodbye PUBG, goodbye Call of Duty na ba to? Gusto nyo ba? na wag na Call of Duty yung aking review. Farlight 84 na yung lalabas sa aking mga videos. Let me know guys in the comments below. But yes, today we're gonna be reviewing the gaming portion of the Vivo V29 and even emulation. Let's try that out. It's Beans and you're watching Unbox Diaries. Uhu! Now, gusto ko agad itry si Farlight 84. I tried it earlier. Actually, this is the first time I've played this game. And to be fair, it actually looks gorgeous no? compared to PUBG, sa Call of Duty. Medyo nag-aalangan ako sa Call of Duty sa graphics niya. Parang hindi ganun kaganda masyado for me. Kapag yung Battle Royale, yung version. Pero yung first person niya is okay naman para sa akin. Pero in terms of yung sa Battle Royale, naku, mukha, yung graphics po niya mukha siyang Fortnite. Yes, that super popular game from 2019. Doon po siya pinakasikat 2019. And it all went downhill after that. Not sure why. Player base na wala. But the same graphics can be found on this game. Mobile pa. And compared sa PUBG, parang mas fast-paced siya. Uh, you get the dashes right here and there. Yung boost dyan. Mayroon siya jump pack, guys, in-game. So you can spice up your gameplay pa. Kasi nga doon sa PUBG, parang medyo grounded kayo masyado. And medyo stiff yung gameplay. Medyo clunky. And things like that. Mas fast-paced po yung gameplay dito. And I like the dropping sequence sa uh, una. Mayroong capsule doon. Nakasama mo yung tatlo mong friends. Or AI. Hindi ko alam. Napansin ko sa una, ang daming players. Hindi ko alam kung totoo yun. I mean, ganun po yung ginagawa ng mga ibang companies kapag nag-start sila ng game. Half of the player base is actually bots. Well, hindi lang naman to si Farlight eh. Si Mobile Legends din gumaganyan even today. Kasi napapansin nyo guys, kapag nag-start kayo sa Master ba yun? Ang napapansin ko, parang hindi nagsasalita yung mga kasama ko. Feeling ko bots yun eh, mga kasama ko. Yes, you, when you start out on Mobile Legends, hindi ka pa rank na epic or legend or mostly bots yung mga kasama mo sa una. Kasi yung feeling ko, sabog talaga yung matchmaking, no? Lower levels. And even sa Mythic, pangit din yung uh, matchmaking. Bangit talaga. Wala akong masabi. I'm so speechless. Ayos niya yung munta na. But yes, I found the controls in Farlight 84 to be very smooth. Not Valorant smooth, pero smooth pa rin siya. I like the scope. I like the two buttons na pag bumabaril ka, uh, ibabaril niya yung isang gun mo. And doon sa baba naman, meron pa siya isang gun na pwede mong barilin at the same time. Also, I like that it's high-tech yung kanyang dating. Even may mga robots, robot pang lumalabas. Uh, pwede mo sakyan, parang tanky siya. And it's got even parang Valorant features. Yung parang may role ka pa. May role ka pa dun sa game, no? Hindi lang yung parang may baril ka lang, tapos gano'n. Meron ka special ability that you can help your team with. Parang ano natin, may, may medic pa, may, may engineer, may, may skills pa, may skills na kasama na specific to that kind of character. Overall, while I was playing the game, ang nag-default po siya sa HD, extreme refresh rate po. Sa HD graphics, actually na-blown away na ako sa graphics niya. And the thing is, I played 2-3 games, hindi po siya uminit. Pwede po siya mag-extreme graphics ha, if you want to. Kaya nag-warm na po siya ng konti, medyo uncomfortable na po yung gameplay. So if you want comfortable gameplay, long periods of gaming dito sa Farlight 84, I suggest mag-HD graphics ko na lang kasi nga extreme, medyo hot siya. And hindi ko masyado makita yung difference in terms of yung graphic. But yeah, the lighting on this game is just next level. Next level po yung lighting niya. Especially yung sunset dun sa drop sequence, ang ganda po. Nagre-reflect po sa aking capsule. I love that. Guys, sa pinapansin ko dito is yung kanyang display, AMOLED display, ay napakaganda po. It really brings out the graphics out of the game. Ang ginagawa kasi ng AMOLED display is that it adds more punch, more saturation, and color to your gameplay. And also, kung mapasin nyo, habang naglalaro ko dito, yung kanyang curve display ay sobrang sagad. Like, oh my god. I mean, this is not the first time I've seen it from Vivo. Pero kasi napasin ko is punch hole na po siya. I mean, compared dun sa mga luma niyang version, parang 
malaking notch po na kita ko sa mga previous versions ni Vivo V series. But this time, it's now a punch hole. Super sagad po ng experience ito ng gameplay. And also, hindi ko naman na-feel yung istorbo ng kanyang punch hole. I've tried it on most games, no? Uh, napansin ko, itong si Vivo V29 ay hindi masyado umiinip. Which is impressive. But then again, hindi po siya yung the best, the, the fastest. Now, what you're getting here is a very massive 6.78 inch 3D curved AMOLED display na Full HD Plus daw, pero nakita sa kanyang specs, 1260 by 2800 Mataas pa yung resolution ng kanyang display. Wow! Meron na rin po siyang HDR10+, pero sa video lang po yan, ha? hindi po sa games. <laughs> this is a very high quality flagship-like display na po. Kasi alam ko meron mga phones out there na claiming that they have a flagship 3D curved display. Kahit 5K lang, 7K, alam nyo na yun. Pero in terms of yung quality ng display na yun, Ito talaga. Siyempre, alam mo talaga na meron tinipid sa ibang parts kapag ganun kamura yung mga ganun devices. Pero, if you really want to invest, to want to experience the best possible tech, you will have to pay for it with the Vivo V29. Now, Beans, ang dami mong sinasabi. Gusto ko lang makita yung Mobile Legends gameplay. Ito na po. Sa Mobile Legends, ito po yung kanyang graphics, super refresh rate, and ultra graphics. Na para sa akin, nakita ko na dito na super optimized si Vivo V29 para dito sa game ito. Wala naman lag. Okay na okay na yung gameplay. Wala kayo problema dito, guys. Hindi po ganun kabigat si Mobile Legends. And even with ultra graphics, kaya-kaya po niya. Yun nga lang, super refresh rate lang po. 90 FPS. Hindi po siya wabot ng 120 FPS. Actually, I've tried the ultra refresh rate sa aking mga flagship. Hindi ko na feel yung difference. Siguro sa mga fast hands or sa mga fast refresh rate eyes na mga pro dyan, mga pro daw. Pero alam nyo ba, yung mga pro ngayon, gumagamit lang sila ng iPhone 11 XR. Na wala po din silang super at ultra refresh rate. High refresh rate lang po ang gamit nila. And they're able to win tournaments. Able to win championships. Pero kung hindi naman championship yung habol mo, kung gusto mo lang talaga maglaro, yes, wala po siyang problema sa phone na to. Up next, alam nyo na yan. Oh, Bins, kakala ko ba tanggal yan? Pero mag-comment ka down below if want mo pa rin to sa aking channel. Kasi si Beng, favorite pa rin to. Lagi po siya naglalaro ng Call of Duty's office. Very high graphics and what's this? Max frame rate? Max frame rate po siya. And what's more impressive is yung kanyang graphics guys. Naglaro na po kami and this is how it looks like. Wow. Sobrang ganda po kasi nga ang laking tulong po na kanyang AMOLED display. Yung 3D curve AMOLED is just so beautiful when you're playing games on this phone. It is incredible. At dahil malaki po siya 6.78 inch almost 6.8 inch we were able to four fingers. Sa Call of Duty kasi pwede ka mag four fingers. Kung gusto mo ng multiple buttons na setup just like this one bawat kanto ng laro ay sagad na sagad mo ang bawat corners ng display ay napansin ko ano no malakas din kanya sounds but it's not like hindi po siya stereo guys isa lang po yung speaker dito lang po but it's clear very loud naman siya and before I show you Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Trail ng mga games na kailan nyo makita so tindrayo naman yung PPS emulator uh, naglaro kami ng Tekken dito okay naman siya wala nang problema Guys, yung mga mid-range processor ngayon ng mga smartphones, kaya-kaya na po nila yung mga emulator na walang po mga PlayStation 1. CCU na po yung sa kanila. But yes, you can definitely play PS1 games here, no problem. Bins, gusto makita yung mga racing games. Ito na po, Asphalt 9. Asphalt 9 is a not so optimized game. Uh, hindi po siya 60 FPS, 40 mga ganun. As you can see, nag-frame drop siya kapag masyadong marami nangyayari sa screen. Transitions and things like that. At ganun din sa Grid Auto. So kung hindi pa alam, Grid Auto is actually one of the games dito sa Play Store. Isa po itong racing game, baka hindi pa alam to, Grid Auto Sport. May bayad po to 100 pesos. And for that 200 pesos, you get beautiful graphics, gyroscopic movement in-game. Kaya lang guys, 30 FPS-ish lang nakita ko dito. Hindi po siya 60-50. Pero malaga guys, cinematic yung itsura niya. Most movies are cinematic. 24 FPS nga lang yun. So, ayun na smoothness. Gusto nyo na na cinematic look. 30 FPS. At ito na po, Genshin Impact and Honkai. Guys, very similar po ang kanilang engine. Kung makapansin nyo, similar po yung look ng Honkai sa Genshin. Ito pong dalawang to ay I think based sa Honkai Impact. Honkai na punta sa punta kay Genshin Impact. But yes, I think this is the most beautiful game engine running right now sa Play Store. Libre lang po siya. Free to play. Grabe po yung support dito yung development. Hindi lang po sa Android, sa iOS but also sa PS5, sa PC. Grabe talaga. Pati sa Switch ata. But Genshin Impact is super heavy for most uh, smartphones. Kaya ito pa yung tsura niya. Uh, medium graphics na po kami dito. And as you can see, Spot naman pa rin siya, pero it's not 60 FPS. Nag-try din kami ng highest settings dito, kaya lang medyo ma-ano na siya, uh, mainit, uncomfortable to play, and syempre, medyo lagi na yung itsaka yung tsura. Pag mag-highest kayo guys, even with the fastest processors right now, Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, 8 Gen 2, nahihirapan pa rin sila dito. There is only a handful of smartphones that are optimized talaga yung tal talagang perfectly that can play this game. And seeing this kind of smoothness, dito sa Vivo V29, is just so impressive. 
Well, syempre naman kasi yung kanyang Antutu benchmark is only about 600,000 points. Medium graphics talaga sa Genshin Impact yung but everything else, even sa Farlight 84, smooth po siya. Maganda po yung gameplay. Ito naman si Honkai Star Rail. Ito naman yung kanyang diskarte. It's more contained, less open. That is why parang feeling ko for me, mas maganda yung graphics ng konti ni Honkai Star Rail. Kasi nga mas contained yung kanyang graphics dun sa kanyang turn-based gameplay. And most of the games I played here, hindi po sila uminit ng sobra. Just make sure if you want to play long periods of time, like 3-4 hours, make sure wag nyo i-highest setting ultra yan. Gawin nyo lang pong medium, high, mga ganon. And by the way, ito pala yung kanyang price. Only 24,999 pesos for a 12-2-5-6. Pero kung gusto mo ng double storage, meron pa siya ang 12-5-12, 26,999 pesos. And whew, grabe. Four review videos. Special itong Vivo V29 para sa akin kasi nga, parang lupit po niya as a phone. From the design, the camera, the performance is just so perfect for the price. Actually, a few years back, Vivo V25 or Vivo V27 nata yun. Sobrang natuwa ako sa kanya kasi nga, it was offering something na hindi na offer ng iba. In terms of specs, V25 Pro guys, ayun. Ba't walang Pro version ito? Baka siguro soon pa yung. Pero yun, Vivo V25 Pro, super sulit dati. And abangan na lang sa aming tier list kung super sulit din to. Sa unboxdiaries.com We've got it all for you. And if you want to see more videos, reviews just like this one, unboxing, you can subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any of my great content. I'm Mr. Bins and you're watching Unbox Diaries. Woohoo!